actually what you're doing will have an impact on at least one child. And if it has an impact on one child, you're doing your job. Um, so I have a real belief that actually um, learning is about making it real. If you can't touch it, taste it, hear it, feel it or smell it, don't teach it. And actually if teachers can, can get children motivated by doing things differently, or as I talk about doing things risky, um, I think we can motivate children. You know, we talk about risk, we talk about being naughty, um, and people say, well, you can't be risky and naughty in the classroom. Well, you can. You turn around to a bunch of reception children and say, bottom, they will fall around laughing and they'll follow you to the ends of the, the earth thinking they're going to have fun. You know, the difference between, between a child's brain and an adult's brain is I stand in front of 60 children, reception children, and say, I want to volunteer. I get 60 children saying, me, me, me. I say, I'm going to burn you. Me, burn me. I stand in front of 60 adults and say, I want to volunteer. All 60 of them look down at the ground. You know, if we can capture that love with reception children and follow it through their schooling, they're going to become learners. They want to learn because learning's fun. It's exciting. It's challenging. Um, what children don't want, they, they don't want to sit there and be placid learners. They want to do it. It's like us. You know, would you rather be, be spoken at or would you rather do it yourself? Now I know me, I'd much rather get down and do it. And when, when I talk to adults and, and I talk to teachers, I say, okay, so who wants to get down and dirty? I suppose sit there and read it. And do you know what? 99% of adults will want to get down and dirty rather than sit there and wait five hours and then might be allowed to use an electricity kit. So it's really about engaging children. when I've had some really tricky uh, year 10 students. In fact, they, they, these were unwriters, as they were told. They won't write. No, they won't write possibly the normal way. And we looked at poetry. We looked at the poem uh, Through the Window. And I said to them, actually, we're going to wrap it. We started wrapping it. And I said, no, we're not. Let's get a pen. I gave them all uh, whiteboard markers. And we went outside in the corridor. And every single one of them started writing their own wraps on windows. I suddenly had 15 non-writers writing on a window. We could then transfer that from the window into the classroom. Why? They were motivated. They suddenly realised they could do it. Risk isn't about chucking rule books out the window. I have high expectations in everything they do. That includes behaviour. And if they let me down, they won't have the fun. And then we can explore the whole notion of what fun is. And fun is different to every one of us. But if you can capture fun in the learning, it doesn't matter the age range, they're going to learn. And you do not lose that, that um, behaviour. You do not lose the discipline that we want in classroom. And last of all, we never lose the high expectations, whether we're writing on windows, writing on the table, underworld writing. Actually, those high expectations stay in the whole time. The amount of times I've had leaders writing on windows where they think the vision of the school should go to. And you know what? It's much more fun doing that than sitting around a board table talking to each other. And the, the, the leaders absolutely loved it. It's about engagement. A high percentage of students drop out of university because they believe the subject is boring because they're asked to go away and research themselves and they can't do it. And what they're waiting for is for the lecturers to turn around and give them the information they need to write down in their essays to pass the test. And we can do it in other ways. We can make it exciting. And I've worked, I worked from four-year-olds all the way up to 18-year-olds. And my philosophy has never changed. Make it real, have fun, have excitement, but have your high expectations and your standards there the whole time. They never change. Once you engage them and with leadership, and it's no different to the classroom, the most important element, I believe, is they need to be able to see the vision. Not hear it, but they need to really be able to see it and feel it. Going back to this touching and tasting vision. If they buy into the vision, we can then move leadership teams further forward and they are all then going for the same vision. The vision needs to be really, really clear for them. So they can't see it, they can't get there. The pathway to get to the end goal might be different to mine because they're different types of leaders. 
But actually, at the end of the day, if they get to the vision we want them to get to, that to me is the main aim. If you've got leaders who support the vision and value of a school, the school will take off. If you've got leaders who don't support the vision or the values, they shouldn't be in your school. Either you will lead them or you'll manage them. And in my eyes, it's either I'll mentor them or I'll coach them. And within either mentoring or coaching, you can still have the humour and the fun. And you need to decide as leaders, is, is this a point where I'm now going to coach somebody into the decisions or am I going to mentor them, lead them? And as leaders ourselves, we decide that. You know, if the school's on fire, I'm certainly not going to coach them where the fire hydrant is. I'm just going to bloody well tell them. However, if it's something to do with how are they going to develop behaviour across the school, well, we can coach them that. What have you tried so far? What else do you think trying? What might be the gains? What might be the stumbling blocks? So therefore, as leaders, we can coach and we can mentor. But the whole notion of fun um, and having humour within any organisation, I think is vital. More disruption in classrooms? Maybe it's because we're still teaching the olden style. You know, you've, you've got youngsters nowadays who pick up an iPad, pick up a phone, and they're scrolling through messages, they're doing pictures, they've got YouTubes, they're able to play an online game, get through to level five, crash, go to the beginning, get to level five in two minutes, get onto level 10, crashes, get back to level 10 in two minutes. Why? Because their minds remember that. What they're not doing at the moment is having a book and turning page by page and being spoken at. If you look at the lights flashing and the sounds, and all of a sudden we take them to the classroom and we expect them to sit there like placid learners while they're being spoken at, I don't know about you, but it doesn't take me long to get bored. That gives us something really challenging to do, but have real time expectations. You know, not too long, but not too short. You know, we're about thinking if we can engage them, they talk about pace. Pace is about moving children's learning on when they're ready. Actually, if they're on the task too long, they start getting bored. If it's, if it's not challenging enough, they start getting, they get bored. You know, they want to be challenged and pace needs to be quick. And if we can work the lesson out. So I, I talk very much about chunking, you know, okay, get on with it. Now let's stop, let's rewind. Where are we, where are we going next? Okay, you've got five, 10 minutes, go, off you go. Chunk it, stop it again. Okay, where are you? Who's stuck, who's struggling? Tell, talk to your partner, tell them where you are in your learning, where you're going next and vice versa. Okay, now move on again. Now, I've done some research and I've asked year 11 children what they actually want. And you know what? In the top three always comes out the word fun. You know, our staff using different tones of voices. Are we allowed to use colours? And they're very basic. But when I compare that with my year six children, do you know what? There's very little difference. And when I compare that with when I ask people what they want from inset, where they're sitting down and being spoken to for four and a half hours, do you know the criteria they want? is exactly the same. They want to have fun, they want to have humour, they want to be motivated, they want to be engaged, they want movement, they want music, they want all the things that is highly effective teaching. So why don't we do it? You know, it's getting rid of the, it, the, the, the element of children being scared to try something in case they fail. And, and part of the education system is actually, we're gearing them up for an exam and many times in exam it's either pass or fail and, and for a lot of students students who find it difficult um they won't engage they won't risk anything in case they fail and that also goes down to a lot of our teachers they won't try something new in a classroom in case they fail and when you look at what failure is well the first time you try something in a classroom which is different you're not failing you just haven't got the outcome you wanted so therefore, if we change the processes beforehand, we're going to get close to the outcomes. You know, when was the last time I've ever, I've walked in some great secondary schools and I've walked into a science room where every single window was covered with equations. Fantastic. Um, I've yet to see any secondary school doing an activity called Bomb It, where they all write their own questions and throw it around the classroom and other children pick up their questions and actually work it out. I've seen very little Underworld or on tabletop writing. I've seen very little. Uh, circle maps and, and you know, so we, we, we're scared of trying things out in case we get it wrong. 
uh, what excites me most about education. I think uh, a lot of practitioners are looking at a range of way of delivering the curriculum. I think that's very exciting. I think, in, especially in primary schools where they're developing their own curriculums, I think that's very exciting. I think a lot of schools are now looking at how they can develop writing across the whole of the curriculum of secondary schools. So it's not just in the English lesson, they're developing the same skills in the history write-up as job you write-up. I think that's exciting. I think that schools are looking at managing exams together. So it's no longer sit alone English. I think that's exciting. And the fact that the government are looking at the fact they're not gonna publish league tables. I think that's very exciting. So if I was to come into your schools to motivate and stimulate your staff, the first things we would do is laugh. In the first five minutes, if we don't get laughed out of the group, I need to go home because it means I can't engage the group. Uh, and I think that actually everybody would go home with activities that they could undertake either in the classroom the next day or the leadership teams to take home and to engage the school in thinking about the school and the best ways forward. And we would finish at the end of the day probably laughing uh, because laughter is really contagious. And I, they would go away thinking, yeah, heart first, head second. And I would be letting the schools down if every single member of staff didn't go away with at least one thing that would make a difference to one person, be it a child, a student or an adult.